halfway through. Awesome, kia ora koto. Um, welcome to this webinar. So today's webinar, I'm just gonna make sure, Helena, you're recording this one <laughs> from the start, cool. Um, so kia ora koto, welcome to this webinar. And this webinar today is about um, how we can combine our makey makeys with Scratch um, for authentic learning and to give students a different way of presenting their information and um, developing their skills. So firstly, um, I'm just going to grab, get out of there for a second. That shouldn't look like that, but that's all right. I'm not sure entirely what's happened. Um, it's fine, we'll run with it. So this webinar will start shortly. Um, and a couple of things I'd like to go over in terms of housekeeping. So your mic, you will notice that all of you were muted coming in. We're just going to keep everybody muted um, because sometimes there's background noise and traffic and open windows and you know children and all sorts. So we're just going to keep it muted for everybody. Um, if you need our attention at all, so I've got Helena here who's helping facilitate this, so she'll be monitoring the chat the whole entire time. Um, if you need our attention, just type anything in there. Same if you've got any questions during, feel free to chuck them in there and we'll look at them at the end. Um, there will be a chance of questions at the end um, and Helena will be keeping an eye on it and she'll feed those to me. So if you want to ask anything, definitely put it into the chat. In terms of your video, um, you can decide whether you want to have it on or if you want to turn it off, entirely up to you, whatever you feel most comfortable with. And then just make sure that your name is visible. So if you haven't um, figured out how to fix your name, um, if, you press the, if you hover over your little picture, press the three dots and you can rename yourself there. You'll also note that um, you can, you know, do a couple of different options there as well. Um, when it comes to the video, if, I'm following along and your video is taking up most of the screen and you can't see anything. You can use the little options to decide whether you want to minimize the video or um, only have a couple of people on or the grid view entirely up to you, however you would like. Cool. Um, if you are getting lost at any point, if you could put a number two into the chat and then Helena can let me know that I need to go back and explain something or slow down a little bit. If you're still with me after um, a little bit, checking in some number ones will let me know that you're um, with me and that I don't have to go back and, and explain anything or slow down. Cool. So um, before I go any further, I thought it'd be really nice if we could open up our session uh, this afternoon with a karakia. Um, so, me e noi tato, tuia ki runga, tuia ki raro, tuia ki roto, tuia ki waho, tuia ki te here tangata, ka rungo te po, ka rungo te ao, haumi e hui e tai ki e. Ko wai au, who am I? Ko Holzenberg te maunga, ko Ryan te awa, no horana aho, ko te whānau speaking, me te whānau mehubrink, oku iwi, ko Alicia tōku ingoa. So it's great to have you guys along on this journey today. Um, a little bit about me, my name is Alicia Speaking, and I'm what is called a Learning Innovation Specialist for Raranga Matihiko. For those of you who don't know, Raranga Matihiko is a digital equity program for students from decile one to three schools, and it's run out of four different museums across New Zealand. I'm based here at the Te Papa, in Te Papa at, in Wellington, um, and I'll put the link to, the web, to our website at the bottom of this presentation so that you can have a look at what we do um, if you're interested. There's also heaps of resources online that we put for you guys and all of our webinars will be up there as well. So the aim of our session is to look at how you can use the tool, um, tools such as Makey Makey and combine it with Scratch to teach your students and create some really awesome digital content with them. So um, I'm, I'm aiming to show you as well that it can be cross-curricular and how you can very easily link in other curriculum areas. The one that I'll be focusing on the most today is also going to be science. What I'm hoping that you'll take away from today is that you understand how inputs and outputs work. You learn how to set up a Makey Makey. Um, you learn how to combine Makey Makey and Scratch in authentic learning contexts, and you understand how it links to the progress outcomes. So I think it's really important to understand a little bit of the background um, of digital technology in the New Zealand curriculum. So obviously it's a new addition to our curriculum. Um, it actually fits underneath the digital technology subject area and it uses progress outcomes instead of achievement objectives. Um, the reason for this being that it allows a wider scope of learning and it's more of a progressive achievement rather than a yes or no kind of an answer in terms of achievement. 
So there are two key strands, um, designing and developing digital outcomes and computational thinking. Now, de developing and designing and developing digital outcomes is more based around creating digital objects and artifacts, whereas CT is based in your kind of code coding algorithmic side of things. Now, the reason that um, this change has happened in the technology subject area has come about due to the need for local talent in our technology industry. So we need to keep up with the fast evolving technological world. We need to make sure our tamariki can stay, um, stay ahead of the curve as well. And we don't want to be left behind just because we're all the way on the other side of the world in a tiny little country, tiny, beautiful little country. So where does Makey Makey and Scratch Coding fit into all of this? So um, the main kind of um, strand that we're going to be looking at today is computational thinking. And that's because coding fits into the computational thinking strand. Now Scratch, our program that we're going to be using today, um, obviously is coding, so that's why it all kind of fits together. The reason we're looking at only the first three progress outcomes is because we're these are the ones that we're finding where students are working in. So although we do go up to progress outcome eight in the curriculum, we are finding that even our older college students are still working through the earlier progress outcomes because they haven't had exposure to um, the curriculum so far. Makey Makey also fits into computational thinking, just like coding. Um, however, it only comes in at around progress outcome two and progress outcome three, and it is classified as an input. Now, this stuff is all very new to most of us. Um, and so I'm going to kind of take you on a journey and try and explain it over the course of the session. Um, and so hopefully you guys can get a bit, bit more of an understanding about how it all works. So if we look at this slide here, you can see an example of our Dakota for Learners series. Um, and our Dakota for Learners series actually breaks down the progress outcomes into more user friendly language. Now we were finding that um, it was a barrier for many teachers, the jargon and the words that we used. So this was developed by my colleague from Waitangi, Monica, and my project director, Tara. And on, so on one side, you'll have the progress outcome as it's found in the curriculum. And on the other side, you will have the Decoded for Learners series. Um, yeah, and this series has actually been approved by the Ministry of Education, so you're more than welcome to use them. Uh, the link to them is on the left side of my screen right here. Also, if you go to our website down the bottom, you'll find them, um, and that will be at the bottom of the presentation. So if we look at the Dakota for Learners version, now I've only got progress outcome two and three up because that's kind of where Makey Makey starts to fit in, but I feel like I should do a little bit of justice and um, explain progress outcome one to you. So progress outcome one is very similar to progress outcome two in terms of it's about giving instructions, following instructions and debugging. Now the difference being that that should be predominantly done in a non-computerized environment. Now there is no reason as to why you can't practice a simulation of an input process output with students in progress outcome one, but that would be in an unplugged situation. For example, you could give a, an example, uh, sorry, an instruction to a student. So student number one would whisper it to student number two, and student number two would whisper it to student number three, and student number three would perform the task. So student number one becomes the input, student number two becomes the processing, and student number three becomes the output. So this by no means is crucial. It's just a way of trying to aid their understanding as they get to more complex concepts. So in progress outcome two, which is the one I've got up on my screen, two students, sorry, in progress outcome two, students are again giving instructions. So they're following instructions, they're debugging those instructions. And for those of you that don't know, debugging is kind of finding your mistakes, working backwards to fix them, to solve them, to do all sorts like that. Um, you will notice now, however, that they are required to be using simple creating simple programs involving inputs and outputs. So they're starting to learn um, the process of that. This is where making making this is where Makey Makey and Scratch fit so well into this because um, it is our inputs and our outputs and they're able to create simple computer programs. So it's a really nice way to link into the um, progress outcomes there. If we look at progress outcome three, the same co-puffer can be used. The difference here being that the pro computer program will be more complex and it will involve deeper thinking from the students. So at this stage, students are actually encouraged to predict the behaviors of what their code is going to create. 
So it could look a little something like, I need my sprite to do X, and then I need my makey makey to do Y. So I will need to use these blocks. So kind of figuring out that justification as to why they're using particular blocks. They're also required to use repeat blocks and loops here. And again, lots of debugging will be used, especially as the code becomes more complex. So I thought this was a really good opportunity to point out how well using a makey makey links to, um, into the science curriculum area. So if we look here at science in levels one and two, um, you can see that in the physical world achievement objective, one of the um, physical phenomena they are to explore is actually electricity. So that, that's your makey makey with your circuits. Um, not to mention all of the strands of the nature of science. Um, we use this quite regularly when we're using makey makeys and when we're using digital technologies. So they're developing a, a better understanding of their world, hence working in the nature of science. Um, the biggest thing for me, the biggest standout when you're using a makey makey is the amount of you know, questions, ponderings, language being used that actually um, fits into that science curriculum. One thing to note as well that uh, Makey Makey works on a range of different conductors and so you can just even imagine at your level one science where you're getting students to test um, the, the, you know, the quality of different conductors, which one is stronger, which things do conduct, which things don't conduct and having lots of experiments like that. So you can already kind of start to see that link there. So similarly, um, you can see at level three that the physical world again mentions electricity as a phenomena. So you're building on what students did in level one and two, and you're moving into more complex circuits now. And this would also be a really good point to mention that um, this also linked to your micro bits later on if, if that's what you're interested in. There's also nothing to state that you can't use coding to control the circuits. So just because you're learning about circuits doesn't mean that it has to be a human control. I mean, to a point it does, but um, there's no reason as to why you can't use your coding to create your circuit. So you're using multiple curriculum areas in one go, which is really awesome. And again, students will be using um, those skills in the areas of the nature of science to work through um, using the Makey Makey. Cool. Level four, again, same thing at level four. Um, we're still using electricity as a phenomena getting more complex, getting more sophisticated, and again, a nature of science um, skills are being used too. Now, what I thought I'd do is kind of explain the idea of inputs and outputs, because that is language that I'll be using quite a bit, um, and then we can move on from there. So, um, inputs and outputs are what make up our processing system. So, an input sends information to a computer to process it, the computer will then send the information to an output to produce um, an outcome and um, to be noted a physical outcome. So to us, it may seem instantaneous, but that is because the computer can read thousands of lines of code at a time. So when we press a keyboard, uh, the letter P on our keyboard, we get a P immediately, but actually that goes through the system. It just does it really, really fast. So an input can be anything that sends information to the processor. For example, you've got your keyboard, your mouse, a camera, a microphone, um, our makey makeys today. Then it moves on to the processor. So when, it, when it's sent to the processor, um, we often call this a CPU or a central processing unit, quite often your hard drives, um, and it'll execute the instruction and send the data where it needs to go. From there, it goes to our output and information is sent out from a computer. Um, to create something physical. So that could be sound or light or text on a screen, whatever it is that your output is, um, is required to do. Cool. Now I thought it would be really good to explain as well the idea and the importance of purposeful play. So from my own experiences, it's really important to have a tutu time or a play time when I'm bringing a new tool. So the Makey Makey can be really exciting there's lots of fun stuff out there. There's lots of giggles, lots of laughter whenever you bring it out um, because it is a new and exciting tool and there's so much that they can do with it. Um, so that's why it's really important to give them time to play, to ponder, to explore and to be curious. You'll find that if you allow 10 to 15 minutes for some play time to kind of get to understand it and unpack it and have a go, that they will be more focused during the learning. 
um, because the novelty of it has kind of worn off a little bit so they can actually get to making some purposeful outcomes. Now, although uh, it is play, it's also important to remember that it should be purposeful. So by setting challenges such as, can you plug it into the computer by yourself? Can you make the lights turn on? Can you code your sprite to move up and down and left to right if that's the direction that you're going in? So by setting little challenges that are quite purposeful, um, it means that it's still part of the learning and we don't get, you know, fall into the trap where they're just kind of mucking around. Awesome. So what is a makey makey? What is all the fuss about? Now I'm going to, um, I am going to be using my camera quite a bit. So from now on, what I would um, recommend is that you can kind of see me as well as the slideshow just so that you get both of that information because I'll be holding quite a bit up to the camera. So a makey makey, as we said before, um, it's connecting to the physical world. So it's a tool that connects the physical world to our computing world. This here is what a makey makey looks like. I've got a picture of it, a nice cartoon picture um, on the screen as well. Now it works through simple circuitry. So you're closed and open circuit. So really, really basic. We just want the current to flow through. So it uses a makey makey board, this one here, and it also uses um, alligator clips that connect it, um, as well as whatever you would like to use a, as a conductor. Now, really important, you'll see on that screen, it's got an earth section. Um, mine is right here, that is my earth. And on the back, if you have a look um, uh, this way, you can see that there are some lines and there are um, metal lines, that's where you want your alligator clips to sit so that it can connect up easily. So you always need a ground or an earth, um, and that is our, our, human con um, our human component. So we are part of that, that circuit, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, just on a side note, I'll just go back to the last screen. So um, the cost of a Makey Makey is about $99. You will get the board, you will come to a nice little box like this, and you will also get some alligator clips. Now, I believe you can buy an eight pack bundle with a carry case for about $806-ish. So it's often cheaper to buy a multi-pack for your school than it is to buy just one. Um, in terms of being robust for the classroom, they are pretty good. So they're quite solid. Um, and they also have these lovely little black bits here that help it sit off the ground. So if you can see that, it kind of just floats. That just protects the, um, the circuit board on the back and makes sure that it doesn't get damaged. Because it is a circuit board, students will have to be careful with it. Um, but we've used it with lots of different children. We've never had any issues. We've used it from, you know, year three upwards. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the point to point out. The only thing that you might have trouble with um, over time is your alligator clips. They, you know, just wear and tear. They might lose their... Um, their spring a little bit, or they um, might get a little bit damaged. Um, sometimes when you're using them with Play-Doh or fruit, it's really important just to get like a, um, a wipe and wipe them down so that you don't get any stuck in there because I have one here that has like so much Play-Doh stuck in it. Um, and so you can't really use that anymore. It kind of ruins it. So that's the big thing to be worried about. However, you can buy alligator clips for fairly cheap down at JCAR. Um, if you ever did need to replace them. So just because your alligator clips aren't working doesn't mean that that's the end. Cool. All right. Um, so something to be cautious of, of with your Makey Makey is that it is great fun, but we need to make sure that we aren't just using it as fun. So we want to make sure that we actually have a purpose for using it. For us today, um, our scratch coding is going to be the big focus, and then we're using the Makey Makey to then control it. So it's just adding another extra layer of learning for our students um, and a different curriculum area to kind of weave in. So we do still have a purpose for it because um, we want to be mindful of that whole idea of we want them to create stuff, not just consume stuff. There's some really cool activities out there, but not all of them um, come from a place of learning as well. At the end of the day, it's just a tool and it's actually about how you use it as opposed to using it and just being like, yeah, cool, I've ticked off, you know, X, Y, and Z. But no, it's about how we use it and how we utilize it. And so at the end of the day, just think, 
what learning are your students getting out, out of it? What can you tick off on your, um, or what things can you achieve in your progress outcomes and your achievement objectives rather than what tools you're using? So here is um, an example of an open and closed circuit. So you can see here, we've got our open circuit and our closed circuit. I like to think of it like doors. Sorry, two seconds. Um, I like to think of it as doors. So if you've got a open circuit and the door is open, you can get through, okay? When you've got a closed circuit or a closed door, you can't get through. So we actually want that closed circuit and that closed door. We want things to be able to circulate through, okay? Um, and remain that way. So I want you to think of the human or the ground as the light bulb in this situation. We're helping that current go through. If we aren't holding it, nothing is going to work. And we want that complete path um, in order to be able to achieve what we want to achieve. Cool, so um, I know some of you have been on my previous webinars, which is awesome. And so you'll be um, fairly familiar with Scratch and coding language and how the block coding works. Um, so Scratch, for those of you that don't know, Scratch is actually a coding language using block coding, really kid friendly, really age appropriate, and they can make some really cool stuff. So they can develop games, animations, quizzes, and digital stories. And they can then use Makey Makey as the control or the input. So these ones here are the kind of blocks that we're going to be using today. So ones where we can change X and Y, um, ones where we can move. And then when our um, key is pressed, that is also another block that we're going to be used. Now, what I'd like you to do is to think of when we're in, in Scratch and having a bit of a go, think of your Scratch platform as a quadrant graph. So um, anything that's going to move up and down is going to be our Y. Now, if I'm going to move up, it's going to be a positive, so it might be change it by 10. If I'm going to move down, it's going to be a negative, so it'll be by minus 10. Same goes if we're going along. Okay, for our X, um, to the right is positive and to the left is negative. Same with this block here, um, move 40 steps or whatever. Again, positive moves you one way and negative moves you the other way. Cool. Now we're gonna start our walkthrough. So I will be um, showing you a little bit of the setup first, because I think that that's really, really super important um, to show you and then I will um, get started on uh, showing you how it then links into Scratch, which is pretty cool. Now you'll have to bear with me as we are all kind of in the situation where we're working from home and trying to do our best. I have my extra desk behind me, which is my bed, um, and I don't have any flash webcam. I just literally have my desktop computer. So I will try and hold things up to you um, as I can't actually physically film my workspace. Um, but that's okay because we're teachers and we just, you know, learn to work with the best that we've got and we <laughs> just kind of carry on. So I'll show you the best that I can, hold things up. It might take a little bit of time, but um, just bear with me. I'm doing the best that I can from this, this working from home situation. So first things first, when you open up your Makey Makey box, you will get a Makey Makey board like this. And you will also get this beautiful, lovely red connector so that you know that that's the one that you're connecting. Um, we've got our USB on this side, this way, USB on this side, so um, that is the bit that plugs into our computer. The other end plugs into our Makey Makey, and you can see that it fits at the bottom just in that slot right there. So I'm going to plug that in. That's the one that's actually plugged into my computer, that would help. Oh, I love to see some people following along with their Makey Makey, this is exciting. <laughs> Um, I'm cheating a little bit because I have two sets so I can like show you something and work on the one that's on my computer. So here you'll see that the, there's a little red light there now um, and that shows me that it's turned on. It shows me that my Makey Makey is working, which is a really nice um, feedback for the students. So once I've got that, what I need to do firstly is I need to um, connect up my alligator clips. So I'm going to grab some. Now, what I like to do, because I'm very particular and I like my colours and I feel like it also makes it easier, is I like, if possible, to have different coloured alligator clips for the different buttons or keys or functions that I'm wanting to achieve. So what that means is that I'm going to try and make my earth a different colour to my left, um, my, my left a different colour to my right, my up and down a different colour, um, if I can. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. Um, you've just got what you've got. Um, but... Yeah, it's a really good habit to get students into identifying the different colors. 
So all I'm doing now is I am clipping this bit onto earth and I'm making sure that it is touching those strips at the end. Oh, at the back. And then this is the one that I will be holding on to to make sure that my circuit's going to work. Cool. So next thing I'm going to do is make my keys. So what you can do is use a banana and I'll get to that later on because it's quite fun. Um, that's my sad looking banana. But what I prefer to use is tin foil. It's a really, really nice, easy way to conduct. But yeah, like I said before, you can basically use anything. You can test it out with your students. Um, the reason is particularly when you're making games and you're using the Makey Manty to connect them to scratch to make something happen. Tin foil is really good because you can just physically make some buttons that you know students can press and you can blow tack them to the desk. So I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to make my keys. So all I'm doing is cutting my tin foil into four pieces and then kind of folding it a little bit. You can leave it as big or as small as you want. I just prefer to have less space because um, it can take up quite a bit of space on the desk and make it quite hard to flip between the buttons. So I'm turning it into a little kind of button. So now I have like a little tin foil button. Grabbing my lovely bright pink vivid and I'm going to draw an arrow on it. Doesn't matter what way the arrow is because you can just turn these buttons around to suit you. So for me, this is going to be my right, it's my right, it won't be your right, my right arrow. Okay, so just like that. And I'm going to repeat that four times so that I have all of my directional um, buttons. Kia ora, Alicia, it's Tara here. Hi. I'm just following along at home and I'm just having trouble seeing some of what you do. I wonder if you could stop sharing your screen just for a moment so you could pop up and be a bigger oh, yeah. video. No Absolutely. worries if you can't. It's good and I just don't want to miss any steps. <laughs> That's okay. Give me one second. Cool. So if you put it onto the speaker view, I should be nice and big now. Awesome. So I've now got all of my four buttons that I have created. So one, two, three, four. So they're all ready to go. So now I get to the fun part. I'm going to grab another alligator clip. I'm just going to tie out the tie on this one. So what we often get students to do, um, part of using the Makey Makey, is also looking after it and making sure everything's tied together. So if we're finished for the day and we're not using the Makey Makey anymore, we'll just get the students to grab the cords and kind of tie them together so that they stay nice and together and don't get tangled on the box and it's in the box and it's nice and easy to come to the next time. So it's just like a little tie like that. Um, it just makes it a lot simpler and I think it's so important to teach them how to look after their tech stuff and again that'll help you with, you know, making sure that everything doesn't get broken. So I'm going to grab another alligator clip. And doing the same thing, I think we another one. Same thing that I did before. I'm going to just clip it on. So this time what I want to do is kind of clip it in between the two holes. All right, so I'm clipping it in this way. Now you will hear that's if you can hear that noise, that's my um, computer just recognizing that it's plugged in. Okay, so I've clipped it in between the two holes. Okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is grab the other end and clip it onto my arrow. Now it doesn't matter whereabouts on your arrow it goes because you can just blue tack it, blue tack it any way that you would like to onto your desk. Okay, now I'm going to grab another cord. And this time I'm going to... Um, it into the other way. I'm just going to stick with left and right for now, um, but if you've got one at home, you can feel free to do all of them. It's just the same process every time. So I've just clipped that one in. So I now have one on my left side and my right side. Going to um, attach this to another one of my 
um, tin foil arrows. Cool. So now that all of that is set up, I'm going to move on to Scratch. So I'm going to start sharing my screen again. Um, and I will show you now how you can actually use the Makey Makey with Scratch. Awesome. Cool. So for some of you, you might have to link into uh, log into Scratch and <clears throat> um, do that first. But for me, I'm already logged in, so I'm just going to go straight to the create part. And so this is where you can start creating games. So we did a little bit on game-based learning. This is kind of the next step. You can start creating games about, um, you know, the, the subject areas that you're doing or um, using your if then you can use the makey makey with that as well. So I'm going to keep it quite simple. First thing that we like to do, however, is we want to rename it. So I'm going to put Alicia webinar because it's really important to teach students to always save their work regardless of what they're doing, even if it is just, you know, a bit of play and a bit of fun, really good habit to get into. So as I mentioned before, we need to make sure that we get those event buttons. So you can see that block that I pointed out before. When I click down, I can use my right arrow, my left arrow. So firstly, my right arrow. Um, and I'm going to get it to move. So I'm going to get it to move set amount of steps. So we're just going to bump that up to 20 so that it's actually obvious and that you can see it. Now, when I'm going to grab the exact same block again, this time controlling the left side. So I'm controlling, I'm coding this cat to be able to respond to when I press things on my makey makey. So it's using that physical thing and connecting it to the computing world and then getting something back. So a bit of immediate feedback. So I'm going to, this time it's going to be moving negative 20. Alrighty. Now, if this goes right, it'll work. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to debug. Now, with the alligator clips, they can be a little bit touchy and a little bit um, not accurate all the time. So if they do start to um, not respond, I might try and change it and try and make it work. But all of this is debugging, which is really good for students to do. So it doesn't always work for us either. We're just humans, you know, we're just trying to do what we can. But I'm fingers crossed, I'm hoping that it will work. So I need to make sure that I always have my um, hand or my fingers, my skin, on the ground control. Now, what's really cool as well, if you're teaching this for the first time in class, you can kind of blow kids' minds by, um, you know, having them all hold hands and then one person touches the, um, the ground and it works. And it's really, really cool. So it's really important though, however, that they um, touch skin to skin contact. So whether they're touching cheeks or arms or hands, um, as soon as it hits the clothing, it won't work anymore. So again, it's a really cool science experiment and you can link into your science curriculum there, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's quite fun. So I'm going to hopefully get this to work. I'm just gonna press start just in case. Um, Needs that from me. So, in theory, now when I press, so what I'm doing is, all I'm doing is pressing my tin foil. That's all I'm doing, and it's actually moving the cat, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can also do get it to do things like create sound because I got my headphones, and the sound's not going to work for us today. Um, but there's no reason why when you get makey makey, you can't play with that yourself. But yeah, all I'm doing is touching the tin foil. Um, and I find that it really helps if, if it's laid out kind of like a game board where you've got all of your arrows blue tacked to the table, really helps kids um, remembering which ones they're pushing and just makes it a little bit more logical. Now, what I do want to show you is if I change it to a banana, what happens? Because that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, like you can use literally anything as a conductor as long as it conducts and it's a conversation that you can have. So I'm going to unclip my arrow. Um, here we are. I'm going to unclip my arrow, take it off. And then all I'm going to do is kind of, you kind of want to jab it a little bit, but you don't want it all going all the way through the banana. So I quite often use the top of the banana. Um, so for those of you that didn't see that, I'll do that again. So what you're doing is here's the top of my banana. Here's my alligator clip. I'm just kind of getting some contact with the banana. Um, 
if you're using bright yellow bananas, you'll see that they bruise very quickly um, because of all of the current going through them, which is also, again, another cool thing about the change of properties. So here I've got my banana now. Um, so you can see because I'm actually physically, I, when I'm, a, I'm about to touch the ground, at the moment I'm not touching ground, I'm just holding the banana. When I touch the ground, you can see the cat moves. Now, if I was to touch ground and not have the banana in my hand, nothing happens, okay? And now what I'm doing is I'm just pressing on it, okay? But you can see that, let's get him back again. Cool. So by physically holding the banana, it's now making it move, okay? So that's how you can use like a piece of fruit. Um, and yeah, you're just limited to your imagination. Try everything out, just kids to work through what does and doesn't work very well. Um, yeah. Cool, so that's that part there. Um, I'm sorry, I'm back to our presentation now. Now I'm not gonna show you anything else anymore, so if you feel like you don't want me up on your screen in terms of my video, then that's totally cool. Awesome. So I'm just going to um, open up the floor to any questions and um, I will try and answer them. So I think Helena might have some questions in the chat that I can start answering. I don't, Alicia. No questions. Does anybody have any questions? I'll wait a couple of minutes for you guys to type if you want to. Um, and if not, then that's totally fine as well. Anything yet? No. No, great. That's good. It means that I, I've explained so things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Awesome. Okay, so if you do think of any questions in between now and the end, um, feel free to just write them in and I can answer them as I go. So Helena, feel free to interrupt me. Um, I, do, I do, in fact, have one question for you right now. Right. <coughs> awesome. Is, do you know of any cheaper options than the actual Makey Makeys that do a similar thing? Um, unfortunately, I don't. So Makey Makey for us is something tried and true and trusted. It won't break. We've had ours for a couple of years. Um, we also use them with so many different students and they just last and last and they don't break down. So um, I don't know of any other cheaper options, um, unfortunately, but um, I would, if it's something that you're going to use regularly and maybe between a bunch of different classes, I think it's a really, really good investment um, to use. And also there's a whole bunch of stuff out there in terms of grants and things like that that you can apply for. You know, funding is a little bit tricky. Um, I have another question for you, which is mm -hmm. where do you buy them from? Cool. So we've got ours from PB Tech um, and they're also really good when working with schools. So I would recommend buying through them um, if you want, you know, and it, because they're a New Zealand supplier as well in terms of tax and things like that, that's all taken care of, which is pretty cool. <coughs> Any other questions? No. Awesome. Okay, so this is just the start of the learning. Um, the real learning is actually gonna happen when you leave this webinar, when you're practicing your own time, get your hands on some makey makeys and start to bring it into the classroom. So um, I'd like you to think of two goals that you would like to achieve around, um, you know, using Scratch and making makeys and maybe just inputs and outputs and one kind of key idea that you'll take away from today. So for maybe, maybe for some of you, it's just and getting your um, and helping your students to understand what inputs and outputs are and how the computer works in terms of processing. For others, you might be slightly further ahead on your journey, and that's totally cool as well. Um, what I have done is I've added some extra um, links at the bottom of this presentation for you. So if you want to look further into this, they'll be there. The presentation slides and the actual video recording um, will be available on our website, and I have included. Um, the link to our website along with my email at the bottom of this presentation um, so that you can um, you can contact us anytime you need. You know, we're just an email away if there's a particular step that you're getting confused with. Um, not to mention 
Uh, we've got another webinar running on Tuesday that will actually be looking at microbits. So that is another option if you were looking instead of making making for microbits. Slightly more advanced, but still a really good option and comes in at a slightly cheaper price as well, which is cool. Um, and we also have a webinar running next week, which is a live Q&A session. So we'll be taking any questions about um, digital technologies, local curriculum, integrated curriculum with a panel of um, some of our museum and digital educators. And we'll kind of go through those questions and give you our opinion on them, which is pretty cool and something a little bit different. Um, so all of that information is actually on our website. Um, and again, it'll just be on the Facebook pages, which is pretty cool. So what I'd likely like to do again is review the aims of the session. Um, and so hopefully you have taken something away from today. You've learned something, experienced something a little bit different. So you've understood how inputs and outputs work. You learn how, you've learned how to set up a Makey Makey learn how to combine the Makey Makey and Scratch and not just make it for the sake of doing it, but actually understanding that there is an authentic learning context and you understand how it links to the progress outcomes. So if anybody has any further questions about how to, you know, combine it into their learning to make it more authentic, you can just look me an email. I'm definitely happy to help where I can. Cool. So I would love to close the session with a karakia um, and I'm going to use the same one as before just to finish us off. Me e noi tato, tu ea ki runga, tu ea ki raro, tu ea ki roto, tu ea ki waho, tu ea ki te heri tangata, ka rongo te po, ka rongo te ao. Hau mi e, hui e, tai ki e. So kia ora, thank you very much. Um, now mahi, thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure to see some familiar faces and names that are coming to my webinars quite regularly, which is really awesome. Um, Sam will be running, and my colleague will be running our next webinar, which is pretty cool. Um, and so yeah, definitely come along and check that one out. It'll be very interesting. And yeah, I'm an email away if you ever need me. Um, just so that you know, I am going to put this recording up online either tonight or tomorrow. If you have any issues, please let me know. You will only be able to see my face. <laughs> so don't worry, none of your faces are included in the recording. Um, and you'll just be able to see me going through the slides and talking through everything. Um, yeah, and the slides will also be up online, so I'll flick you an email where to find everything and what you can do, um, and also the link for our next uh, webinar, which is pretty cool. So I'll stop sharing my screen now. Um, yeah, kia ora, thank you very much. Um, have a lovely rest of your evening. See you later.